Arabian Nights Chapter 1 The Sultan and Scheherazade Sultan Shahriar had a beautiful wife. She was his only wife, and he loved her more than anything in the world. But the Sultan's wife took other men as lovers. One day, the Sultan found her with another man. He was very angry and cut off the man as head. Then he cut off his wife as head too. From that time the Sultan began to hate all women. From today he said to his vizier, I'll marry a new wife every day. She'll stay with me for one night. Then, the next morning, I'll cut off her head, so no woman will hurt me again. The vizier had to find a new wife for the sultan every day. But this was a very difficult job. Every family was afraid. No girl wanted to be the sultana's wife for one night and then die. Fathers began to send their daughters away. The vizier too was afraid. What will happen to me, he thought. I can find any more girls. Perhaps the sultan will kill me too. The vizier had two daughters. One of them, Scheherazade, was beautiful and very clever. One day she said, Dear father, please do something for me. It will make me, the sultan and the people, very happy. I would like to make everybody happy, said the vizier. What is it, my daughter? Ask, and I will do it for you. Give me to the sultan. I will be his wife, answered Scheherazade. The vizier's face turned white. Never, he said. The sultan will kill you. I can to do that. Please don't who ask me. Please do it, answered Scheherazade. Everything will be all right, you will see. I want to be the sultan's wife. The vizier put his head in his hands. He was very unhappy. He loved Scheherazade very much, and he didn't want to do this thing. But Scheherazade asked again and again, and in the end, the vizier said sadly, All right, my daughter, but I don't understand. Why do you want to throw your life away? Scheherazade went to her sister, Dunyazade, and told her everything. Dunyazade began to cry, but Scheherazade said, Don't he cry, dear sister. I don't want to die. Everything will be all right, you will see. But you have to help me. I want you to sleep in the room with the sultan and me. Wake me up one hour before morning. Say to me, please tell me a story. That's all. The next day, Scheherazade went with her father to see the sultan. The sultan was very surprised. Why did the vizier want his daughter to be the sultan's wife? But Scheherazade was beautiful and the sultan was very happy with her. So he married her. That night, Scheherazade said to the sultan, Sir, please can my sister stay with me tonight? My last night? All right, said the sultan. Nobody slept that night. The sultan always slept badly. Scheherazade was excited, and Dunyazade was afraid. One hour before morning, 
Dunyazade spoke. Dear sister, she said, please tell me a story. So Scheherazade began. Chapter 2. Behind the Door Salem's father was very rich. When he died, he left his money and houses to his son. But Salem was young and lost the money very quickly. Then he sold the houses and lost that money too. In the end he had nothing. He sat in the streets and waited for work. Sometimes he carried things for people. One day an old man spoke to him. You had a better place in life, said the old man. I can see it in your face. I live with ten other old men in one house. Come and be our servant. Salem walked through the city with the old man, and they stopped outside the old man's house. Before they went in, the old man turned to Salem and said, This house is a very unhappy place, but never ask any questions about that. I'll remember that, said Salem, and he followed the old man through the door. The inside of the house was very beautiful. The rooms were large, with floors of different colors. In the middle of the house was a lovely garden with many flowers. Salem could hear the sound of water and bird song. Then he heard other sounds. They came from the other old men. The men wore black, and they cried in their rooms. The first old man took Salem into his room. He showed him a box with pieces of gold inside. Use this gold when you buy things for us, he said. Salem also saw a door in the old man's room. He wanted to ask, what s behind that door? But you didn't ask questions in that house. Salem worked hard in the house for many years. One old man after another old man died, and he put them under the ground in the garden. In the end, there was only one old man, Salem S. first friend. Then he was ill too. I am going to die, my son, he said to Salem. Then please tell me something, said Salem. Why are you so unhappy? And what is behind the door in your room? I can to tell you that, said the old man. But don't try to open the door. You'll be unhappy every day of your life. The old man died. He left the house and his money to Salem. Now Salem was rich again, but he wasn't happy. He thought about the old men and the door. Why were the old men unhappy? What was behind the door? Salem had to know the answers to these questions. He took a piece of heavy wood and broke the door. The door was open. Scheherazade stopped. Well, said the sultan, what happened next? What was behind the door? Sir, there's light in the sky, said Scheherazade. You're going to kill me now, but you can stop there. You have to finish the story. Then please give me another day, said Scheherazade. The sultan was angry, but he said, All right, I'll give you one more day, but after that, the next night, Scheherazade started her story again. 
Behind the door, everything was very dark and quiet. Then Salem saw some stairs. He took a lamp and walked down the stairs. The stairs went down for a long way into the ground and came out into a cave. Salem walked through the cave and came to the sea. He stood there and looked round him. Then he saw something in the sky. It got bigger and bigger. It was a very large bird. It came down and caught him by his clothes. Then it flew with him across the sea. Salem was afraid, but then he slept. The bird flew all night. Early next morning Salem woke up and saw a beautiful beach below him. A lot of people waited on the beach. The bird flew down into the middle of the people. The people were very friendly to Salim. They brought him a fine horse and helped him onto it. Then they took him through lovely gardens to a beautiful house. Inside the house there was a lovely woman sitting on a chair. When she saw Salem, she got up. You're here, my love. I am very happy now, she said. She took Salem S. hand and walked with him through the house and gardens. Everything here is mine, she said. Stay with me and be my husband. Then this will be yours too. I would like that answered Salem. But there is one thing, said the woman. They went back to the first room, and she showed Salem a door. Don to open that door, she said, or you'll be unhappy every day of your life. Salem took the woman his hand. I don't want to open the door, he said. I only want you. Salem married the beautiful woman, and they lived happily for many years. He wasn't interested in the door, but then he began to think about it more and more. I opened the first door at the old man's house, he thought, and I found this lovely place. When I open this door, Perhaps I'll find a more wonderful place. One day he couldn't wait. This time he didn't have to break the door. He pushed it and it opened easily. Everything was dark behind the door. After some minutes, Salem saw a large eye. Then he saw a large bird. It was the bird from the cave outside the first door. The bird jumped into the room. Salem tried to run away, but it was too late. The bird caught him by his clothes and pulled him outside. It flew up into the sky, and the house and garden got smaller and smaller. The bird started to fly over the sea and Salem slept. After a day and a night, Salem woke up. He was in the cave by the sea again. The bird wasn't there. Salem walked through the cave and found some stairs. He walked slowly up the stairs and found a door. He went through the door and he was in his old house in the city again. For many months, he tried to find a way back to the wonderful country, but nobody knew anything about it. In the end, he understood. No ship could take him to that lovely country 
and his beautiful wife. Now I understand about the old men, he thought. They were unhappy because they made the same journey. They found that wonderful place. Then they lost everything too. Salem lived in the house all his life. He dressed in black clothes and he cried every day. He never laughed again. That was a very sad story, said the Sultan. But the world is a very sad place. He too never laughed these days. But is the world really sad? said Scheherazade. Everybody has to laugh sometimes. I can tell you a funny story about a great man. Oh, but it is too late. But I want to know, said the Sultan. I think I can give you another day. You will tell me the story tonight. So that night Scheherazade told the story. Chapter 3 Sultan Haran Laughs The great Sultan Haran couldn't he sleep. One night he suddenly said to his vizier, The night is long. I want it to be shorter. What can I do? The Sultan had a servant, Masra. Masra helped the Sultan night and day. Now he began to laugh. The Sultan was angry. Why are you laughing? He asked. Are you laughing because I can't sleep? No, sir, answered Masra. I'm not laughing at you. I'm thinking about something funny. You see, yesterday I walked down to the river Tigris. There were a lot of people there. They stood round a big fat man. The fat man told funny stories and did funny things. Everybody laughed at him. Well, go and find this fat man, said the Sultan, bring him to me. I can't sleep. Perhaps I can laugh at him too. Mazra went to the fat man's house. The man's name was Abdurazak. He was asleep and he didn't he want to get up. But when he heard about Sultan Haram, he dressed quickly and came outside. Let us go, he said. Let us not be late for a great man. Wait, said Masra. The Sultan will laugh at you and give you a lot of money. But think. Who told him about you? It was me, Masra. So you have to give me something too. When the Sultan gives you your fee, one half is yours. Give the other half to me. Abdurazak wasn't he very happy about this, but in the end he said yes. Then Masra took him to the Sultan. When Sultan Haran saw Abdurazak, he said, So people in the street laugh at you. But I'm a Sultan. Will I laugh at you too? Abdurazak began to say and do funny things. Masra laughed and laughed. Then the vizier laughed. But the sultan didn't he laugh. Abdurazak was very surprised. Then he began to feel afraid. Stop, said Haran. You're a very stupid man and you aren't he funny. So here's your fee. Masra hit this man hard ten times. So Masra began to hit the unhappy Abdurazak. One, two, three, four, five. 
Then Abdurazak cried, Stop, Mazra! That s one half of my fee. Now take your half. What is this? Said the Sultan. What do you mean, one half of my fee? So Mazra told the Sultan about Abdurazak s fee one, half for Abdurazak and the other half for Mazra. When he finished, the Sultan asked Mazra, Well, do you want your half of the fee? No, sir, answered Mazra. Abdurazak can take the fee, my half and his half all right, then, said the Sultan. Abdurazak will take Mazra's half. Mazra hit him five more times. Mazra hit Abdurazak five more times. After he finished, Abdurazak wanted to run away. But the Sultan said, Don't go, Abdurazak. That was only the first half of your fee. Now you have to take the second half. Abdurazak's face turned white. He was very afraid. What second half? What did the Sultan mean? The Sultan turned to his vizier. This is the second half, he said. My vizier will give you a hundred pieces of gold. Now, Abdurazak, take your fee and go home. The Sultan turned to look at Mazra. Mazra's face was very unhappy but it was also very funny. Now, and for the first time that night, the Sultan laughed. I like that story, said Sultan Sharia. But it was very short. There is time for one more story so Shahrazad began her next story. Chapter 4 Faisal and the Barber Faisal was a rich young man of Baghdad. He lived in a large house with many servants. But he didn't he have a wife. He wasn't he interested in love. One day Faisal went for a walk in the streets of the city. He saw a lot of young girls in front of him. He didn't he want to meet them, so he turned into a small street. He looked up and saw a beautiful young girl at a window. From that minute, Faisal was in love. Then a man on a horse came into the street. He had many servants with him. He stopped outside the girl's house and went inside. Is that her father? Faisal thought. He went home, but he couldn't he eat or sleep. He thought about the girl. Who was she? He had to know. An old woman worked in Faisal's house. She asked, What is wrong with you, sir? Are you ill? No, answered Faisal. But I'm in love. He told the old woman about the girl at the window. I know that girl, said the old woman. She is the daughter of a judge. Her father is a very important man. How can I meet her? Asked Faisal. Listen, said the old woman. I know the people in the girl's house. I'll speak to the girl about you. She'll listen to me. The old woman went to the house and spoke to the girl about Faisal. The girl listened. She was very interested. I would like to meet this young man, she said. On Fridays my father always goes out in the morning. Tell the young man. He can come and see me then. 
I'll speak to him. When Friday came, Faisal was very excited. First he went to the baths. Then he sent a servant into the town for a barber. Faisal wanted the barber to cut his hair. But the barber was very slow and talked about stupid things. Be quick, said Faisal. I have to visit friends. Friends, said the barber. Oh, no. Now I remember. Some friends are visiting me today, but I forgot to buy food for them. What will they think of me? Listen, said Faisal, I have a lot of food in my house, but I'm going out. I don't want it, so you can take it. But finish your work and G.O. Thank you, thank you, said the barber. But now what can I do for you? I know. I can come with you to your friend house. No, you can't, said Faisal. Oh, said the barber. Then he got very excited. Perhaps your friend is a woman? Yes. Perhaps things will be difficult for you? But, really, I can help you. I helped a lot of my friends in this way. Please let me come with you. Faisal didn't he want to listen to the barber. Oh, all right, he said. Take the food home to your friends. I'll wait for you here. Then you can come with me to my friend house. But Faisal didn't he wait for the barber. He didn't he want the barber to come with him. When the barber left, he went to the girl's house. He was very late because of the barber. The old woman opened the door and took him upstairs to a fine room. There he sat and waited for the girl. But the barber didn't he go home. He paid a man and the man took the food back to his house. Then he followed Faisal to the girl's house. When Faisal went into the house, the barber waited outside in the street. Suddenly, he saw the judge, the girl's father. The judge came down the street and went into the house. Inside, the judge found a servant. The servant had the judge's money in his hand, so the judge began to hit the man hard. Outside in the street, the barber heard the man's cries. It's my friend, Faisal, he thought. The judge is killing him. He ran to the door and began to shout. Help! Help! He cried. The judge is killing my friend. Many people heard the barber and came out of their houses. They stood round the judge's door and began to cry, Help! Help! The judge is killing this man's friend. From inside the house, the judge heard the noise and opened the door. When he saw the angry people, he was surprised and a little afraid. Then the barber said to him, Where's my friend? Yes, where's his friend? Asked the people. They were very excited. I don't understand, said the judge. Who is this man's friend? Why is he in my house? You bad old man! shouted the barber. My friend loves your daughter, and she loves him. You know that very well. So you killed him. 
Good people, said the judge, my house is open to everybody. But I'm telling you, this man's friend isn't he inside. Come and look. The barber ran into the house and the people followed him. Faisal heard the noise and was very afraid. He found a large box and climbed into it. Then the barber came in. There you are, my friend. He said. You'll be all right now. I'm here and I'm going to help you. He closed the box and began to carry it downstairs. There were many people on the stairs and he pushed them out of his way. But Faisal was very angry with the barber. Go away, you stupid man. He shouted. I don't want your help. He began to kick the box hard from the inside. The barber fell down the stairs and the box fell out of his arms onto the floor. Faisal climbed out. His arm hurt and his face was black and blue. He pushed his way through the people and ran home quickly. He had to get away from the barber. But the barber followed him and shouted, Wait for me, my friend. I only want to help you. Sharia laughed and laughed. In the next room, the vizier stopped his work and listened. He was very surprised. Why is the sultan laughing? He thought. And what is Shahrazade doing? Why isn't he, she dead? The next night, Shahrazade began a new story. Chapter 5, The Young Man In Baghdad, there was a cake shop owned by Judge Ali. Despite his lack of wealth, he was a kind man. He put a lot of effort into his work. Ali had left his shop as floor a jar. He added a tiny bit of gold to this jar once a week. This money was meant for him in his later years. Ali took out the jar when he turned 50. He thought, I have a lot of money now, as there were more than a thousand gold pieces inside. Before I die, I would like to see the world. Ali then sold his store. However, there was one issue, the gold jar. It was too big for him to travel with. Then it dawned on him. After purchasing some olives, he added them to the jar above the gold. Ali then sealed the jar and brought it over to Husin, a friend. Husin ran a store as well. He begged, please let me leave this jar of olives with you. Obviously, my friend, Husin replied. Leave the olive jar here with me. Sort it out here in my store. Ali had been gone for a while. After Egypt, he traveled to Syria. Ali was in Syria one day when Husin's wife asked for some olives. However, the store on their street was closed. My shop has some olives, Husin said. Recall? Ali never returned but he did leave me with a jar of olives. Maybe he s passed away. So that we may consume his olives. Husin went to his store and took the olive jar out. However, the topmost olives were extremely dry and old. He reached into the jar and withdrew a piece of gold rather than an olive. He then took out additional gold fragments. Husin was taken aback. 
he pondered for quite some time. Ultimately, he removed the olives from the jar and disposed of them. Subsequently, he removed the gold from the jar and buried it beneath the shop floor. He said only, we can't use those olives, to his wife. They were too dry and ancient. He then purchased fresh olives. He sealed the jar after placing them inside. Maybe Ali will return, he thought to himself. He handed me an olive jar. I'll return the jar of olives to him. After seven years, Ali returned to Baghdad a few weeks later. He went to Husin and requested his olive jar. Olives? Husin inquired. What olives? I left you with a jar of olives. It is placed in your store. Oh, indeed, Husin replied. Sorry, I overlooked that. It's been seven long years. I'll give it to you when we visit my shop. Ali was overjoyed to see the jar of olives. I'm grateful, my friend, Ali said. I want to give you something right now. Ali reached into the jar and took out olives instead of gold pieces. He repeated himself over and over. Eventually he exclaimed, where is my gold? What became of my gold? Gold? What gold? Husin inquired. This jar held some gold that I had. Olives? Husin inquired. What olives? I left you with a jar of olives. It is placed in your store. Oh, indeed, Husin replied. Sorry, I overlooked that. It's been seven long years. I'll give it to you when we visit my shop. Ali was overjoyed to see the jar of olives. I'm grateful, my friend, Ali said. I want to give you something right now. Ali reached into the jar and took out olives instead of gold pieces. He repeated himself over and over. Eventually he exclaimed, where is my gold? What became of my gold? Gold? What gold? Husin inquired. This jar held some gold that I had. You're not very good at remembering things. The gold was hidden from view. You kept it a secret from everyone. Thus, it's possible that the jar contained no gold. Ali wrote a letter to the Sultan expressing his extreme rage at the judge. The Sultan was captivated by Ali's tale. By now the jar of olives was well known throughout Baghdad. But Husin or Ali was correct. Let us stroll through the streets tonight and observe people, the Sultan said to his vizier. Regarding Husin and Ali, what are they saying? The vizier and the Sultan noticed some kids in the street that evening. The kids said Husin S and Ali S names. Those kids are having fun, the vizier remarked. Husin is one boy and Ali is the other. There is another boy acting as the judge. After hearing the young judge speak, the Sultan remarked. That boy is very clever. He poses excellent questions. Bring him over to me in the morning. Bring the judge, Ali, Husin, the olive jar, and two olive vendors as well. 
These individuals visited the Sultan the following day. Come, boy, declared the Sultan. Remain by my side. You evaluated Hujin and Ali in the play yesterday. You'll actually do it now. And you, judge, he sobbed, pay attention to this boy and take what you can from him. He is aware of right and wrong, honest people and dishonest ones. Despite his extreme fear, the boy said, bring me the jar of olives. Now, did you give this jar to Husin? He asked Ali. Yes, Ali replied. Did Ali give you this jar? He questioned Husin. Yes, Husin replied. After taking some olives out of the jar, the boy ate them. Afterwards, he told Husin, these olives are delicious. Have you had any to eat? Husin said, no. When Ali was out of Baghdad, I refrained from opening the jar. The two olive vendors received some olives from the boy. He said, try these olives. They are very good for their age, they are only seven. As old as seven? exclaimed the olive vendors. These are not seven-year-old olives. Three years is too soon for any olive. Its color fades. These olives are the ones harvested this year. The boy judge countered, but Husin says these olives were in the jar for seven years. Everyone's eyes were on Husin. Husin's countenance became pale. He declared, I took the gold. I apologize, Ali. Thus, Husin's reputation suffered. While Ali regained his gold, he also lost a friend. The boy remained with the Sultan and went on to become a well-known judge. There aren't he many excellent judges, Sharia remarked. Shahrazade said, I know another story about a judge. A dwarf and a judge. It's incredibly humorous. There isn't tea time, though. Indeed, time is on your side. You have one more night with me. Shahrazade therefore began a new story the following evening. Chapter 6 Basra S. Dwarf In the city of Basra, there lived a man who sold fish. The fish vendor encountered a dwarf on the street one evening. The dwarf had many interesting stories to tell, and the fish vendor enjoyed telling them. The fish vendor then extended an invitation for dinner at his home. Tonight, my spouse is preparing a large fish, he remarked. Join us in eating it. The fish was tasty and the dwarf was ravenous. The wife of the fish vendor kept giving him more and more food. You're just a small man, she remarked. You must consume a lot of food. You'll be huge then. Laughing, her husband slapped the dwarf across the back. He did this in a cordial manner, but the dwarf was full of food. Inside him, a big chunk of fish went down the wrong way. The dwarf was quite sick. He went blue and then red in the face and was unable to speak. He landed on the ground and remained motionless. The fish vendor was terrified. The dwarf has died, he concluded. A dead man shouldn't he be in my home. There will be inquiries, even though it was an accident. 
I'll be taken before the judge by the people. What verdict will the judge render? What will occur to me? His wife said, let us get the dwarf out of our house. The fish vendor pondered. He carried the dwarf outside after that. On the ground floor, across the street, resided a physician. The fish vendor ascended the physician's staircase and positioned the dwarf outside the door. Then he let out a loud cry and took off running. The physician hurriedly opened his door. But the door gave the dwarf a severe blow when he did this. The dwarf tumbled to the bottom of the flight of steps. The dwarf remained motionless as the doctor ran downstairs in pursuit of him. He exclaimed, This little man is dead. What will everyone say? It was an accident, but still. Despite being a doctor, he murders people. Nobody will contact me in the future. How am I going to proceed? Then it dawned on him. He glanced both ways along the road. Nobody was outside, and it was getting late. In the next house lived an elderly bird seller. I understand, the physician said. I'll toss the dwarf over the wall and into the garden of the elderly bird seller. The dwarf will then be his issue rather than mine. The dwarf descended easily over the wall and landed close to the birds. The birds began to cry out loud. The elderly bird vendor heard the disturbance from inside the home. My birds are being harmed by someone, he thought. Running outside, he noticed the dwarf lying on the ground close to the birds. He began slamming his head against him. Criminal! He yelled, What are you doing with my birds? Tell me. Still, the dwarf remained silent. He remained motionless. The elderly bird vendor then turned back to the dwarf out of fear. He believed, this little man is dead. I didn't he want to kill him, but I hit him. What is the judge going to say? Then it dawned on him. His eyes roamed over his garden. There was nobody outside. He carried the dwarf to a large house across the street. In that home resided a man of great wealth. He placed the dwarf before the wealthy man's door. He then bolted for home. The wealthy man went out with his pals for the evening. He discovered the dwarf in front of his door when he got home. Awaken! He yelled angrily. This is not a place to sleep. He gave the dwarf a forceful kick. The dwarf remained unconscious, but his voice was audible to others on the street. One man exclaimed, Stop! as he emerged from his home. Give up. I know you'll murder that small man. The wealthy man came to a stop and peered down at the dwarf. The dwarf, though, stayed still. You see? The other man asked. He is dead now. People yelled, he killed the dwarf as they peered out their windows. Come on, let South take him to court. They brought the dwarf and the wealthy man before the judge. The judge was asleep, and it was the middle of the night. However, he awoke and went outside. 
He listened to the people and cast a glance at the dwarf. You killed him, the judge remarked to the wealthy man. So, you must now pass away. The judge's words were heard by the bird seller. He said, Please, sir. The dwarf was not killed by this man. I completed it. I gave him a headshot. He passed away, but I didn't he want to kill him. I dropped him off at this man's door. That's okay, the judge said. Thus, you must perish. The doctor thought, I don't like this old bird seller, upon hearing this. He cannot, however, pass away. It wasn't he him, I did it. The doctor exclaimed, wait. The dwarf was not killed by the old man. I took his life. I pushed the dwarf down the stairs after opening my door too quickly. I then threw him into the garden of the elderly bird seller. When is this going to end? Inquired the judge. So you have to die. The fish vendor responded, No, no. I dispatched the dwarf. Though it was an accident, Fear gripped me. I placed him in front of the physician's office. I hit him because some food had gone down the wrong way inside of him. I'll demonstrate for you. The dwarf was struck on the back by the fish vendor. However, a sizable chunk of fish leaked out of the dwarf's mouth as he did this. The dwarf awoke. He was still alive. What transpired? He asked. Where am I? The judge then gave her final speech. Nobody has to die because the dwarf isn't he dead, he declared. However, you struck and kicked this small man. He will receive fifty gold pieces from each man. Go home now, and remember to be nicer later. The next tale that Scheherazade told lasted two nights and was quite lengthy. The Sultan was unable to murder her. He needed to hear the story through to the very end.